All right, we are getting a lot of learning in today. So by now you should have read the story that I have on your slide presentation, page 377 at the edge of the sea. It has all of your vocabulary words in it. So what I wanted you to do too is go through those highlighted words and see if you knew any of them. So if you haven't done that already, just look through those, um, pause the video, look through those and see if you uh, recognize any of those because we're gonna start going over them right now. Okay, so our first word, I'm gonna do these in order again. Yep, I have them in order. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm sure you guys have heard that you are brilliant, right? Very bright or striking, radiant. Okay, so brilliant. What part of speech do you think this would be? Noun, verb, or adjective? If you don't know, a lot of the times you can put it in a sentence and see. So brilliant. Um, I'll read the sentence and see if this helps you a little bit. On a sunny day, you can look at a waterfall and find brilliant colors or a luminous rainbow in the spray of water. Okay, so is it a verb? Is it doing anything? No, it's not an action word. Is it a noun? Is it a person, place, or thing? No, is it an adjective, a describing word? Brilliant, yes. So what's it describing in that sentence? On a sunny day, you can look at a waterfall and find brilliant colors or a luminous rainbow in the spray of water. What is brilliant describing in this? The colors, right? You're saying the colors are brilliant, so it's an adjective. Okay, so very bright or striking, radiant. Our next word. Oh, you know what? It's supposed to be gleamed, gleamed. So gleam means the same thing. Gleamed, if we add that ed, that's past tense. Okay, so to shine softly. Gleam is to shine softly. When things gleam, they look shiny, usually from light of another source bouncing off of them. Okay, so when things gleam, they look shiny, usually from a light or another source bouncing off of them. So it's to shine softly. What do you think this word is? Noun, verb, or adjective? Is it a person, place, or thing? Is gleam a person, place, or thing? Nope. What about a verb? Is it an action word? Is it doing something? Can something gleam? Yeah, if you look outside and you're, um, you have snow all over the place, okay? It's gleaming, right? It's shining. It can do something, so it is a verb. Okay, our next word, shimmering. Shimmering. And again, I have shimmer. Same thing, right? To shine in a wavering, unsteady way. Shimmer. So a lot of the times whenever I think of shimmering, I think of glitter, okay? Because sometimes whenever you have glitter and you hold it in the light the right way, it kind of like shimmers on your wall, okay? You see a bunch of different lights kind of shimmering. Okay, to, to shine in a wavering, unsteady way. When things shimmer, the light reflects off of them in a wavering rather than a constant way. Okay, what do you guys think about this word? Noun, verb, or adjective? Is it a person, place, or thing? Nope, not a person, place, or thing, so it's not a noun. What about a verb? Is it doing something? Yeah, it's shimmering, right? When you see something shimmering on the wall, it's doing something. You can see it doing something, so it's a verb. Okay, next word, chorus. <clears throat> chorus, a part of a song that is repeated often after every verse or everything sung or spoken at the same time by multiple voices, chorus. All the members of the choir joined in singing the chorus. Okay, what part of speech do you guys think this is? This one might be a little tricky. 
so noun, verb, or adjective? Well, a noun is a person, place, or thing, right? Part of a song, that's what this is, it's part of a song. Is that a person, place, or thing? Is a song a person, place, or thing? It's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, so let's keep noun on the table. What about verb? Is a chorus a verb? Can you chorus? Not really. What about an adjective? Is it a describing word? No, so it is a noun. It is part of a song. Last word, guys, we don't have many this week. Coward. Whenever I think of the word coward, I don't know if you guys have ever read the story, uh, The Wizard of Oz or seen the movie, The Wizard of Oz. The Cowardly Lion. Okay, you had the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Cowardly Lion. Now, he was afraid of everything, wasn't he? That's what a coward is. Yeah, so whenever he went to the wizard, he wanted to get some courage so he wouldn't be such a coward. Okay, so a person lacking courage to do or tolerate difficult or frightening things. Okay, so they're scared of a lot of things. A coward is a person lacking the necessity necessary courage to do or tolerate difficult or scary things. Hey, what do you think this is? What part of speech? Noun, verb, adjective. Well, I think this kind of depends on how you use it. So if you're calling somebody, you're a coward. Okay, that would be a noun because it's a person, type of person, it's a coward. But if you were talking about cowardly, so like that cowardly person, that's an adjective. Okay, so you're kind of describing how somebody is. But we're gonna say that one's a noun because it's using coward. Okay, so let's go ahead and read our story. And then um, I'm gonna have you guys study your vocab words and do your vocab A to Z and all that. So at the edge of the sea, so as I'm reading this, I want you to kind of think of your, whenever we get to those vocab words, kind of think of how they're used in that sentence and how they fit with your vocabulary terms. The two boys hesitated at the edge of the forest. They looked out at the sea. Waves caught the morning sun and sparkled in a thousand points like brilliant jewels. The white sand gleamed as though some servant of the wind had been polished, polishing it all night. The boys knew it would soon be too hot to tread. Still, they stood gazing out. The scene was like a painting. Its colors were bright and already shimmering with heat. Other than the waves and a few seabirds, nothing moved. It was all too radiant. Perhaps it also did not seem real because a great journey lay ahead of them. They hoped for some omen of good luck. At their backs, a chorus of birds began their songs. May your travels be safe, they seemed to chant. May your hearts be true and brave. May you never know the shame of a coward. Firm and in purpose, may you find what you seek. The boys smiled then. They shifted the canoe on their shoulders and stepped forward into the, into the white sand. Okay, so if you'd like to go back um, at those words now that you know what each of them means and kind of just look at them again and see how they're used in that sentence. Okay, a lot of the times you can use those context clues around your words to figure out what they mean. Okay, go ahead and go on to the next slide and it will ask you to study your vocab terms.